So you often hear from me when I do Vaitemen episodes, but I'm gonna do something different today. I'm gonna have you hear from my wife. Yes, my wife is gonna talk to you today on what it is to be married to an entrepreneur, uh, especially after the video that came out a few weeks ago called 15 Things You Should Know Before Dating an Entrepreneur. And so many wives messaged and said, Pat, can you please make a message on uh, 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 for the woman's side, so for the partner's side, so we can hear this. I said, you know what, why don't I just have my wife do video and let her tell you. Now, one thing you need to know about my wife is this. Uh, while she shoots this video, she's nine months pregnant, the baby's doing three weeks. Um, we're on our third one. I met my wife, she moved from Houston to LA, and uh, when she moved to LA, not knowing anybody, and her third year in business in the financial industry, she made 150 a year uh, on her own pen. She worked hard, hard working person then, we met in the business together five and a half years later we went on our first date and then the rest is history but i want her to tell you her experience from her point of view and her messages to i like how she did it one message is to the person that's with the entrepreneur married to the entrepreneur so if i'm the entrepreneur the wife's you know message being directed to her how it is to be with the entrepreneur or regardless but whoever's the entrepreneur and the second part of her message is to the actual entrepreneur, hey, here's what you need to be doing. If you want me to support you, I expect you to do this. And I thought it's a fantastic message. It's a good mix up for you to hear somebody else give the message to you as well. So with that being said, here's my wife, Jennifer Bed David. Hi, my name is Jennifer Bed David, the wife of Patrick Bed David for Valuetainment. Um, a few weeks ago, Patrick came out with a video that was 15 things to know when you're dating an entrepreneur. So this is my response to that actually was requested for me to do video in response based on my experience of dating an entrepreneur. So these are the 12 things to remember when you're dating an entrepreneur. So number one is be patient. Um, I often find myself waiting on Patrick and you know, that's okay. I mean, I, I've learned that I must be a little bit flexible with my schedule or with our schedules. Um, he's not always going to be home at the exact time that he promised and it's just because he's working you know he might be on the conference call with some of the top leaders in the company strategizing their next move or you know he's working on a major project that's going to take the company to the next level whatever it might be i know that he's working and it's going to be to my benefit as well trust me when we're walking the streets of Paris or we're laying on the beaches of Hawaii, I'm not complaining about waiting on him a little bit. So tip on this one is to remember when they work late, it's to your benefit as well. Point number two is don't argue in front of others. Have you ever heard of the saying, don't air your dirty laundry out in front of others? What I'm talking about is don't fight or argue in front of your friends. Be sure that if you have a challenge or something that you're having a disagreement on, uh, have those kind of conversations behind closed doors because trust me, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot better that way. Patrick, on the other hand, he has no problem at all with me calling him out just as long as that just as long that it's privately, and you can do that as well. You know, typically you want to call out your partner, but make sure that it's behind closed doors and it's in the setting of your your own. Um, your own home and it's not in front of other people. Uh, a little tip here is if you're wrong, admit it. Trust me, they're going to uh, respect you and trust you more in the long term. A book recommendation here is the book Love and Respect because men typically are driven by respect and women are driven by love. Point number three is there will be spontaneous moments. Uh, Patrick is the king of spontaneity. I remember when we were dating just for a few months, um, it was my birthday and he called me up one day and said, hey, you know, meet me here in about 30 minutes. And of course I'm angry and frustrated because it's my birthday. You know, when it's your birthday, you want to get dressed up and look really nice. And so I didn't have time to do that. And the whole way that we were going uh, to the location that we were going, I was upset because I didn't have time to get ready. So. Uh, sure enough, he had planned this whole surprise trip that we were going to go uh, uh, on a cruise in the Long Beach uh, Marina and we had a, a whole weekend planned at Catalina. So it was a whole nice uh, event and uh, weekend that he had planned for my birthday. And, you know, of course, in the, initially I was upset because I didn't get to, you know, get ready and dressed up like I wanted to, but I had time for doing that once we got to the location. So um, just remember is there's going to be those moments of spontaneity. So the tip on this one is always be ready and appreciate the quality time together. Point number four, know there will be peaks and valleys. I don't necessarily mean financially uh, in this sense, but although that could happen as well, I, I mean more in the mood of your partner because there will be times, for example, when your partner is going through certain situations or challenges that they're dealing with at work. Uh, maybe, you know, they're having um, 
certain situations, it's really um, burdening them or it's really he weighing heavy on them and on their mind, they're thinking about it, constantly trying to find some sort of solution to the challenge or how am I going to fix this and how am I going to fix this problem? And so they may seem a little bit distracted or maybe a lot distracted at home. So you may be thinking that it's something that you've done that has made them upset when that's not actually the case at all. And then uh, there's going to be the opposite situation where everything is, you know, great and they feel like they're on top of the world. So what I would suggest in my tip on this one is just really clarify where the mood is coming from. Point number five is commit to personal development. Since your entrepreneur is typically going to be busy traveling the world or uh, working very much on their on their business, what you typically want to do is entertain yourself or work on yourself by learning new things. They're actually going to really like the fact that you're enjoying yourself and uh, you're improving yourself. So uh, what I would like to say is that work on building your own identity and don't you know so they don't have to feel like they need to entertain you and so what i've done is i've typically have taken on new things that i want to learn every single year um just this last uh, few years i learned how to ski we went to aspen i took ski lessons that was awesome it was so much fun i started reading more books but also reading more books that he was reading as well so we can be growing uh, together uh, i took some poetry writing classes um learned how to cook some new things and just really started to uh, work on myself and improve myself, but also, you know, and enjoying myself at the same time. So tip on this is do things that will build up your own identity. Point number six is spice up your intimate life. Change up your routine a bit. It's normal to fall into a routine typically when uh, you know, you and your partner are find, trying to find ways to have the intimate time together. But, you know, I'd say get creative in your personal life because you want to prevent uh, you or yourself uh, from the possibility of drifting towards something else that maybe excites you other than your partner. And we know uh, where all of that typically will lead. So we won't, don't want to go that direction. So tip I'd say in, in this particular uh, point is to make your personal life a priority. Point number seven is don't try to control them. You know, you were initially attracted to this person because of who they are, so don't try to change them or control them because prom I promise you, if, if that is the case and you're not okay with this, um, maybe this relationship is not the one for you anyways. So uh, I'd say my tip on this is let them do what they do best. You know, they always say that the fastest way to make an enemy is to try to change them. Point number eight is applaud their achievements and praise them. My husband is my hero, but how often do I tell him that? I certainly admit that I can do a much better job at telling him how great he is, and we all could do a little bit better at praising our partners. So keep in mind, even though you think that they are the greatest thing since, sli since sliced bread, um, we can do a much better job at telling them that, that more often. So my tip on the, this is to make it a habit to be encouraging and uh, if you're not someone who's good at verbalizing, write a note. And then I would say a book recommendation on this one is the five love languages. Point number nine is lead the schedule. We all know that entrepreneurs make their own schedule, but what I mean by this is actually put appointments in their schedule as though you're booking an appointment to uh, have a date with your husband or your partner. So if there's important weekend uh, getaways or you know family dates that you've got to make sure that uh, he or she is a part of, just make sure that's in the schedule. So important tip on this one is if it's not scheduled, it's not going to happen. Point number 10 is know how to deal with the critics. Um, for example, when Patrick and I first started dating, uh, we got a lot of negative uh, feedback from critics, from friends, you know, from family members. You know, people were like, you know, are you sure you wanna date that guy? Do you know who that is? Do you know how he is, you know? And there were letters that came, there were friends that were just really doubting the fact that we would be together. His family wasn't quite sure if he should be dating me because I wasn't Middle Eastern, but you know, we learned to kind of put everyone else's opinions to the side and we just continue to move on with our lives, you know. And I know when we first started the company, there were a lot of people that Patrick helped out and did a lot of really good things for that were talking smack about him. You know, at the time we were losing so much sleep because we were constantly worrying about these kinds of things. We even lost our 
first baby to miscarriage just because of all the stress that we were dealing with at the time but what we've learned to do is we've learned to anticipate the negativity that comes along with the territory as an entrepreneur we all have our own set of critics and just remember this tip is to focus on what you can control point number 11 is don't feed their anger and their frustration now your entrepreneur is going to have some times when they're dealing with struggles with maybe there's certain people at work or there's family members that they're having a challenge with uh, what you want to do is try to come from the perspective of the other person maybe that they're having this problem with and try to strengthen um, the relationship versus weakening the relationship you know they may come home to you and say you know i can't believe that this person did this and you can kind of say you know i'm you know i'm not really sure babe if that's what they were intending when they did that you know so the tip on this i'd say is be a uniter not a divider point number 12 is learn about their business and how you can help and be involved immerse yourself into their business environment and understand it because obviously you love the person that you're with and so you should learn how to engage yourself into their passions and into you know their dreams because if you're going to undermine anything that they're doing or um, you're coming in in any negative way at all only thing it's going to do is going to create a natural divide and you certainly don't want that so the tip here is to be supportive and engage yourself into their passions. Lastly, I want to share with you a few points that are gonna be focused towards my entrepreneur as uh, everything that I've talked about so far has been for someone who's dating the entrepreneur. So these next few things that I'm gonna discuss are just gonna be to my entrepreneur. So point number one is that your partner must see results. We've gotta go out there and we've gotta make money. Now I understand the struggle, but this does not go on forever. So you gotta make money, you gotta get results. Number two is work when you are away. You wanna be productive, not just busy. You know, your partners are sacrificing time away from you and from your family, so you better be working when you're gone from home. Number three is don't lose your partner's trust. This goes both, both ways and it's actually, uh, the key to this is to maintain it. It's kind of like your credit score. You know, uh, there's things that you can go out there or behaviors that you can do uh, that's going to increase your credit score and then there's things that you can do to dec decrease it. So such actions like bankruptcies and defaults are gonna be bigger hits to your credit score than late payments, but both are gonna affect you negatively and then some in more drastic ways. Number four is constantly hit your milestones and have constant progress. Number five is to involve me, talk to me, tell me about your business because I want to be included. And those are my points. I hope that you have gotten value and enjoyed the content. For more content and videos, please visit patrickbetdavid.com and don't forget to subscribe.